The Seattle Mariners are one and four to start the season. And that to me is incredibly frustrating. Look, I've been a Mariners fan my entire life. It's appropriate that the first episode of this new podcast features the Mariners in my first segment. And trust me, I promise you, it won't always be this way. And if they continue to play this way, they won't even be worth talking about in the first segment. But I've been a Mariners fan my entire life. I have lived and died with this team. You know, I've loved this team for 30 years. I've lived and died with them for at least 25 or so. So anytime they lose four out of five, I'm going to be upset by it, and it's going to have me down in the dumps. But I do recognize that losing your first or losing four of your first five games in a season is not the end of the world. I know the season's not over. I know the sky is not falling. I know there's 157 games left as I record this year on this Tuesday. I also know that the Mariners played a very good Guardians team to start the season, and they are good. And it's no shame necessarily in losing three or four to that team. And I know that other good teams are struggling as well. I believe the Phillies are good. They're 0 and 4 as I record this. I know the Blue Jays are good. They're 1 and 3 as I record this. So just because the Mariners have lost four and five, or four of five rather, doesn't mean that I'm going to call for people to be cut. I'm going to call for people to be fired because I'm not. But this stretch where you've lost four of five is incredibly frustrating and is incredibly disheartening. First off, the Mariners have been at home for all five of these games. You're supposed to be able to win when you are playing at home. Now, we know that with the new balanced schedule and more games coming against everyone around the rest of the league, the Seattle Mariners will have to travel even more than they already did before. The Mariners already travel more than any other team in the league, and now they are going to add on to that. Life is going to get harder from a travel perspective. And because that is coming, it would have been really nice to take care of business at home before you start to feel the effects of that. Now, every other year, trip to Philadelphia, trip to New York, trip to Miami, trip to Atlanta, trip to Washington, this on top of your other trips to New York and to Boston. And now you're going to have to go to Pittsburgh, don't forget. And on top of your other trip that you always take to Tampa, It's going to get hard, and there's going to be a lot of travel. It would have been really nice to see the Mariners take care of business here at the start of the season playing in T-Mobile Park, and they haven't been able to do it. And they really haven't looked good for most of the first five games. They looked good-ish on opening night, and they've had good moments, namely by Julio, in the other four games that they've played, but they really haven't looked that good. So again, the sky is not falling. But I know what's coming next, and I know what happens next and how much travel there is. And now you have squandered four of five opportunities to play at home in front of your home fans and start the season off on a high note, and you haven't been able to do it. And when you start traveling to the East Coast and to the Central Time Zone and you start doing it all the time, you're going to look back at this early stretch of baseball and say, man, we really let a nice opportunity at the early season go. We let a nice opportunity to get off to a good start go, and that's not something that you want to have happen if you're Scott Service and the Mariners. Look, the Mariners have World Series expectations. Jerry DePoto said on Seattle Sports on 710 in Seattle last week, we are one of the teams that can win the World Series. And maybe they still will, and maybe they will still play great. But at one in four, they're not giving us a whole lot of reason to believe that they are the team that we thought they are. And that's frustrating. Number two, I really wanted to see this team get off to a great start this year. Yes, I want them to win the World Series, but I wanted to see them get off to a great start in helping themselves get to that point. The last two years, the Mariners have won 90 games, right? They won 90 games in 2021, and they didn't make the playoffs. They came close. They were in it to the last day of the season, but they didn't make the playoffs. In 2021, they won 90 games, and they did make the playoffs. But each of those years, they started slow, and they had to come back. And they had to spend a ton of energy coming back and to get back into the season. Last year, they're 10 games under 500 in the middle of June, and then have to rely on a 14-game win streak right around the All-Star break just to get back into it. I know the Mariners are resilient. I know 
that they're never quite out of it. I know that they're not going to give up, and I know that they will rectify this at some point. But I wanted to see them be in a position this year where they didn't have to do that. That is what's so frustrating to me. One of my favorite quotes that I was ever told is there are three kinds of people in the world. There are people who get hit and do nothing. There are people who get hit and fight back. And there are people who hit first. I know that the Mariners are person number two. They can get hit and fight back. They've done that in 2021 and in 2022. They are resilient. They will play hard and they will figure this out at some point. But I don't want it to be too little too late. They were able to save themselves in 2021. They weren't in 2000. They were able to save themselves in 2022. They weren't in 2021. I don't want to have to play that game again. I don't want to have to play that game again. I want the Mariners to be a team that can hit first. I wanted nothing more for this team to take the momentum of last year, of finally breaking the drought, of finally getting to the playoffs, of them winning a playoff series in Toronto, taking two games on the road. I wanted them to take that momentum, and then I wanted them to take the disappointment of being swept in against Houston and being shut out on your home field for 18 innings. I wanted all of that to coalesce together into the Mariners starting out the season 4-1. and one. And then being seven and two, and then being nine and three. And then all of a sudden we look up and they're 14 and five, and they've got a lead in the division, and they're playing from a position of power instead of a position of weakness. And that bothers me because here we are again, they're already looking up at the standings. And I don't want to get this to this point where the Mariners are having to fight just to get to 500, and all of a sudden it's May, and they're, oh, hey, they're, they're 16 and 18 coming into this series. Can they win two out of three to get to 500? I don't want to be doing that. But that's where we're headed based on what we've seen in the early going if the Mariners don't turn this around. And number three, one of the reasons why I'm so disappointed in how the Mariners have started is that this is the chance, this is the time of year that they have a chance to have made up some ground on the Astros. I know no one's talking standings here the first week of the season, but I'm talking standings the first week of the season. The Mariners finished 16 games worse than the Astros last year. Okay, They finished 16 games behind the Houston Astros. you got to make up those 16 games somehow. The Mariners have felt naturally like they're going to because they're going to get a full season of good Cal Raleigh and good Julio and a full season of Luis Castillo, and there's probably truth in that. But you also have an opportunity now to make up some of that ground, right? Jordan Alvarez is still, as good as he is, dealing with the hurt hand. Dusty Baker has said he probably won't play every day in the early going. Take advantage of him not being in the lineup all the time. Jose Altuve has been out and will be out for two months. The lineup will only get better as the season goes on when he comes back. Take advantage of him not being here. I don't want anybody hurt, but it's just a reality that one of the Astros' best players is out. You need to capitalize on it, and instead, you're falling behind already. The Astros' rotation has a youngster in Hunter Brown in it. He struggled last night as we record this against the Tigers. Capitalize on him not having it figured out yet, because like all Astros pitchers, he eventually will figure it out. I don't, I, I don't want to be in a position where all of a sudden you're fighting and you're eight games back and then they figure it out and you end up 14 games back. I don't want that. I, and then, oh, by the way, the Texas Rangers look awesome. They're three and one. They swept the National League champion Phillies. Their offense is good. Their pitching staff is healthy. John Gray even pitched well yesterday in a loss against Baltimore, their first loss of the year. So the Angels are improved. The Rangers are improved. And the Astros are still the Astros. And the Mariners are struggling to keep up. And here we are. We're five games in. The season is not over. I certainly know that. I'm not going to be doomsday Danny on this team right now. I still believe they're good. I still believe they're fully in contention for a playoff spot at the end. But it would be nice to be operating from a position of power instead of a position of weakness, which is exactly where they are five games in. And tonight, there's no such thing as must win in April. But this feels like a game the Mariners really should have. They face Otani on Wednesday. If they don't win this one, you're looking down the barrel of a sweep, and that's going to be a really big problem if this team is 1-6. and six. 
through the first seven games. Season is not over, but the beginning of the season is incredibly discouraging. 